This is the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN Television. You are on to the news on the hour. I am Fulusho Taiwo. You're welcome. Bill Gates, co-chairman of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, has said that the execution process of the Economic and Economic Recovery Growth Plan, ERGP, does not reflect the needs of Nigerians. The Economic and Economic Plan Goal is a medium-term document launched by President Muhammad Buhari administration in 2017 to restore the nation's economic status after it was hit by the worst recession in 29 years. Gates, who is now the second richest man in the world, made this statement while speaking with the expanded National Economic Council, presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. Meanwhile, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo responded that the call made by Bill Gates asking the federal government to resolve challenges surrounding human capital development. According to Oshimba Joe, investing in people was primary aspect of the current administration's economic recovery growth plan. Nigeria has strong uh, economic growth and development ambitions encapsulated in our economic recovery and growth plan, which we launched in 2017. All of those lofty ambitions can only be achieved through the determined application of human skill and effort. And for that effort to be meaningful and productive, it has to come from people who are healthy, educated, and who are and feel empowered. It is this realization that has helped us to ensure that one of the primary planks of our economic recovery and growth uh, plan is, quote, investing in people. And I think you pointed that out also in, in the comments that you made. And it is for this reason that we're expanding the reach and quality of our health care through the National Health Care Insurance Scheme and working to guarantee basic education for all persons, whilst also upgrading and modernizing the quality of secondary and post-secondary education. Speaking for that, Oshiba Joe noted that the government was aware of the people who were critical to driving the economy, which was the administration was currently doing everything possible to improve the basic infrastructural elements and to enhance proper human life. Former President Olushe Gunwobasanjo has described the action of African leaders absent at the signing of the African Union Continental Free Trade Area as criminal. President Muhammadu Buhari, who cancelled his trip to Rwanda, was absent at the signing of the agreement. Buhari, giving reasons for his cancelled trip to Kigali, to the signing of the African Union Continental Free Trade, Area Against Framework said enough consultation was not given, was not made before the Federal Executive Council. Federal Executive Council approved the signing of the Framework Agreement for establishing the African Continental Free Trade Area. According to him, the agreement had the capacity to hinder local entrepreneurship and encourage the dumping of finished goods to Nigeria. Obaso just speaking in a video posted by NBS Rwanda at African Trade Agreement criticized African leaders who refused to sign the trade agreement. He described their reason to assent to the trade agreement as mere flimsy excuse and criminal. I am surprised that any African leader at this point in time will be talking about either not understanding this as very important to be here or to support what you are going to sign. I see that as criminal to a fault. The Christian Association of Nigeria can 
rejoiced with the families of 104 Dutch school girls who regained their freedom from captivity of the Boko Haram terrorists after the intervention of the federal government. It however expressed worry that Leah Sharibu, the Christian girl among them, remains in captivity for refusing to denounce her faith. Can President Reverend Dr. Samson Ayokunle, in a statement by the spokesman Pastor Adebayo Oladeji, said the development has again confirmed its position that the primary target of the terrorists are the Nigerian Christians. The body further demanded that Leah Sharibu must be set free to reunite with her parents. Meanwhile, the mother of the girl, Rebecca Sharibu, pleaded with the government that Boko Haram to release the daughter, saying that our daughter cannot be forced to embrace a religion unknown to her. The president, Muhammad Buhari, also assured that his administration will not relent in its efforts to bring Leah Sharibu safely back home to her parents. President Muhammad Buhari has been accused of insulting the people of Benue State when he visited the state on the 12th of March, following the January 1st and 2nd massacre with tattoos carried there by the killer headsman. This accusation was contained in a speech made by the former General Secretary, Vanguard Against Thief Massacre Architects, Usaba Lawrence, during one of our studio programs called Christians in Politics. He accused President Muhammadu Buhari of neglecting and assaulting the people of Benue by strolling to the government house in Makodi and, and allegedly spoke for about three minutes only to return to Abuja almost immediately to have a meeting with the U.S. Secretary. What is going on can be looked at from several perspectives. Uh, but as I, I like to summarize it to impunity and the lack of punitive measures taken on people who go against the laws of the land. We, we, we are running a system that does not punish wrong. And so it, it, it makes people to go along with this wrong to the extent that it becomes unthinkable that these kind of things are happening. So I would say it's, it's, it's impunity, be it under the guise of politics, be it under the guise of uh, economic struggle, be it under the guise of uh, an uh, expansionist uh, theory. It's all about impunity. If there was punishment for it, if we had a government that can call itself a government, we won't have all of this going on. It's pure impunity. Architect Utsaha also believed that the Earth's main activities in Nigeria and the negligence shown by the government as regards the state of the nation can be seen as impunity. This was also echoed by the Director of Civic and Political Affairs for the Anglican Communion Church of Nigeria, the Venerable Joseph Unwaya. I think what is going on is a punity of the highest order and it's taking us back to the Stone Age where uh, the one who has might can take it all. I've never seen uh, a situation like this before where people are moving on the street with uh, multipurpose machine guns, killing innocent people, macheting people in the name of whatever they call it. And uh, these people, nothing tangible is being done. It, what do you call that? That is the punity of a lawlessness of the highest order. We are almost being thrown into the state of anarchy already as a country. And that's why I say I support this statement you know, in its entirety. Any government that is worth calling that name must rise up to, the, to its... Uh, I mean, to, to his feet and do something. 
Governor Samuel Autumn of Benway State has stated that the protracted attacks on Benway communities by suspected eight men was causing humanitarian and food crises. The governor warned that if the development is not checked, it could result to famine across the land. He stated this when he visited internally displaced persons IDPs in Afghana, Gaudu, and Bajimba camps. According to Autumn, the continued displacement of the people could affect the next planting season, which led to a food shortage in the state and the country at large. Governor Tom appealed to those in position of authority and capable of putting an end to the crisis to do so, saying the displaced children forced out of school could be those of anyone while assuring that it will do everything lawfully possible to ensure the return of the displaced to their homes, the governor expressed optimism that God will rise and wage war against the invaders. He promised to sustain the supply of food and all the relief materials to the displaced persons, stressing that medical attention who have seized on the camps. The governor said the visit was to reassure the displaced persons that they were not abandoned by their predicament and that everything was being done to ensure that they returned to their homes as soon as possible. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMAR, has received no fewer than 149 Nigerians who voluntarily returned from Libya. The returnees comprised 107 male adults, 37 female adults, including a medical case for female children and other female infants. Abraham Tamrat, the program manager of the International Organization, for migration Lagos, and then the returnees over to Alaji Yakubu Suleiman, the Southwest Zona Coordinator of NEMA. Suleiman thanked the International Organization for Migration and the European Union for facilitating the repatriation of the Nigerians who had been stranded en route from Libya to Europe. He assured them that both the federal and state governments had lots of incentives for their rehabilitation and integration to complement the effort of EU and the IOM. Chief Ruben Fashonotti, national leader of the Pan Yoruba Sociocultural Group of Ferry has declared that restructuring remains the only solution to the problems of insecurity and economic crisis militating against Nigeria. The Afeni Ferry leader spoke at a summit organized by the Oyo State chapter of the group themed the Yoruba Nation for a better today and tomorrow. Held at Jogo, Center in Grood, Okado Ibadan. Chief Fashion Ranty insisted that the restructuring of Nigeria will bring about desired peace, security, and stability in the country. He, however, lamented the failure of the federal government to accede to agitations from various parts of the country for restructuring, saying that that has been responsible for the persistent crisis in most parts of Nigeria. We shall now go on a short commercial break. We shall be back to continue with the news immediately after now. Please stay with us.
spiritual or social events and need a conducive venue? Are you organizing campaign programs for your ministry or church? With its serene environment and standard facilities, the Ibu International Ecumenical Center at Delta State is the best choice to have your next retreat, including clergy and wives, leaderships, nights, organizations and societies, conferences, seminars, camping, dinner and other Christian social and corporate activities with as low as 3,000 Naira per night. And pairing option, you can also enjoy great time. With its peculiar origin of God asking Mr. Alex Ibu to vacate his private house for divine use, Ibu Center is a special hallowed ground set apart by God himself. We have standby generating sets, library, quiet environment, security facilities, swimming pool, chapel, open field, lounge, restaurant, clinic, board meeting, lounge, camping accommodation. The Ibu International Ecumenical Center is managed by the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, but open to all Christian bodies, fellowship, and organizations. For more inquiries, or booking, call 090 39 70 7143 or 070 5619 Visit our website on www.ebrucenter.org and our email at ebrucenter at yahoo.com. Announcer, Venerable Dr. Prince Will Iroba, Director. Are you, you are welcome back. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or uh, youtube.com slash TV To be up to date with our news and other programs, please download the ACNN app for Android from Google Play Store. And now to some foreign news. The primate and presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church in USA, Michael Curry, and a group of Protestant and Roman Catholic leaders have begun what they call a campaign to reclaim Jesus from those who they believe are using Christian theology for political gain. The reclaiming Jesus message was made known in a March 22 documentary on the Sojourners website by the Reverend Jim Wallis, the founder of Co-Jonas. Citing the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., who said the church is the conscience of the state, not its master or its servant, the group stated that when the people of the church is undermined by political leadership, faith leaders must stand up to speak out. The signers in, the, in their affirmations and directions and rejections said they believe that each human being is made in God's image and likeness, and therefore they reject the resurgence of white nationalism and racism in their nation on many fronts, including the highest levels of political leadership and also as one body and rejects misjourney, mistreatment, violent abuse, sexual harassment, and all sort of women that has been further revealed in culture and politics, including churches and the oppression of, of the child of God. The signers have set up a website reclaiming Jesus, where the statement and a one-page summary can be downloaded. There is also the, to be a collection of resources in addition to a five-week civil discourse curriculum that already has been released. The 62-year-old Tony Iwobi, who was the first Nigerian to be elected into the Italy's parliament, has declared support for mass deportation of Nigerians and immigrants from other countries. Before he emergence as a senator, Iwobi's party, League Party, had insisted that all immigrants should be supported. When the party fielded Iwobi as his senatorial candidate, many believe that it has often its stand on anti-immigration. However, recent outbursts by Iwobi has shown that the allegation that the party is fueling racism seems to be true. 
Iwobi was born in Nigeria but came to Italy on a student visa about 40 years ago. He went to marry an Italian woman before starting his own IT company. He has since been a, complete, a supporter of the league of more than two decades and has been campaigning with the slogan, Stop Invasion, which is in reference to the over six, 690,000 migrants who have landed on Italian shores from North Africa since 2013. The United States U.S. President Donald Trump has replaced his National Security Advisor, General Herbert McMaster, with former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. Trump announced on his Twitter handle that McMaster would hand over to Bolton on April 9, even as he thanked the former advisor for doing an outstanding job. Responding to the move by on Twitter, Bolton said he was looking forward to working with President Trump and his team to make their country safer at home and stronger abroad. However, Mark Master explained in a statement released by the White House that he was leaving the position following his retirement from U.S. Army. Only last week, Trump fired Secretary of State Rex Tillerson in a tweet replacing him with former CIA Director Mike Pompeo. And so that's it on this edition of the news on the hour. We want to thank you and thank you profusely for watching. I am fully sure Taiwo, please mend it. Don't end it in a hurry. God bless you.